In the next few videos, I wanna show you how to filter data in your Flutterflow project. Now, normally in an app, you're not just gonna show your whole database, right? You're gonna have some users or you're gonna have some companies or products and you're gonna to wanna to filter them in various ways. And there's a lot of ways to do that in Flutterflow. In this first video, we're gonna do the simplest form of filtering. We're just gonna add some filters on top of querying our Firebase collection. So if you don't have a Firebase collection set up, we'll link to a video about how to do that. But if you do, let's take a look at how a project is set up and then set up some filters. Okay, so here is our collection right here. It's a collection of fruits. We've got images, name, price, and color. In the UI here, we've just got a wrap element with a container with just a bunch of widgets containing an image and some text. So I'm in our wrap element and it's bound to the fruits collection and it's just a bare binding, nothing else right now. And of course, on our text, we've bound to the name property and the price property. And of course, the image down here. Okay, so let's set up our first filter. Okay, so to filter, you come over here and we click on our filter. And the first thing we're gonna select is what field do we wanna filter by? So if we open this up, we can see all the fields in our database. So if we come over here and this is what we're seeing, name, image, price, color. So whatever fields you have set up in your Firestore, those will be the options here and you can filter according to any of these. So if you wanna filter by the color or the name or the image, you can do all that right here. So we're just gonna be as simple as possible and we're gonna filter by our name. Then we get two additional dropdowns. The first is what relation is it? And so you can see here, this is what kind of filtering we want right? And you can look through all those and we're going to go through some of these. But first, once again, the simplest possible, we're going to say equal to, and then lastly here, we're given two options. So that is to say, we have our name. And so let's just say our name is Apple over here. And we want to say, we want to filter when this condition is met, when Apple is equal to what? And, we're, and these two options say a specific value that would be a value we just write in right here. So if we wanted to show only our Apple one, then we would have to say Apple. And as always with filters, you want to confirm it. The other type, which we'll look at in the next video, is from a variable. So this could be a variable from anywhere in your app, anywhere where you have variables, you can reference in here. So it could be a variable from a widget, like a button or a checkbox. It could be a local variable. It could be from an API call. It could be from anywhere. It's super powerful and dynamic. But right now we just want a specific value. We just want an apple there and we're gonna confirm it. So what this should look like is we should only see the apples. So let's see what we have got. We've got one apple here, red apple, and we've got a green apple. So we should only see two apples. So let's test our app. And here we go, both are apples. Okay, that's great. Let's see what other filters we can do. So if we come over here to our app and we're in our filter and we could come down instead of equal to, we could say in. And what in is saying is it's in a list or in an array. So if you're looking for multiple fruits in this case, this is what we would want. So once again, we want it from a specific value because we're gonna write it in. And so maybe we want apple and we want, what other fruit we got in here? A cherry. So then we add in a cherry here and we'll confirm that. And let's reload. Cool, now we've got multiple. Now we're filtering with multiple properties. All right, well, let's try numbers. So if we look over here, we've got one, two, three, all the way through four dollars is what I'm intending with these. So maybe we just wanna find our cheapest fruit. So let's come over here. And this time we don't wanna filter on the name, we wanna filter on the price. So we are going to say less than so any fruit that is less than some specific value, we're gonna say two, that's what we wanna show, show our cheapest fruit. So let's check this out again. 
And there we go. We've got one fruit for $1 in our database. Okay, but let's instead of that, let's sort our items here. So let's get rid of this filter right here. And let's say order by. And here, let's order by our price. And we can see here we've got either increasing or decreasing. Let's see our most expensive fruits first. So we're gonna say decreasing and confirm that. And let's take a look. So now we should see all of our fruit, but ordered from most expensive to least expensive. Awesome. $4 up here and we're moving down all the way to our cherry at $1. So that's the most basic form of filtering, when you're filtering on your query collection. But often, you want your filtering to be interactive. You want it to be dynamic. You know, when you're in the Amazon app, normally you'll pull out that menu on the side and say, oh, only items from this brand or only shirts of this color. So you'll press a button. And in the next video, we're gonna show you how to real-time filter your list with buttons and drop downs and check boxes and stuff like that. Let us know if you've got any questions below and we'll see you in the next video.